types of walking and uh, various types of what is the difference what how, what do you measure when, when you see a silly walk versus a normal walk versus the walk maybe of a person who's aging or maybe a person who suffers from a disease so that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, about, about this um, uh, entire uh, history of how I got involved with this and and what have we learned from from this type of data so what I'm most proud of uh, of what I achieved here at, at, at Hopkins is, is to work with, with my good friends and collaborators and, and create the, the SMART Stats Group um, and the acronym to Statistical Methods and Application Research Technology. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, uh, smartstats.org. So what is wearable computing? Uh, for me, uh, these are silent, persistent, reliable sensors of human signals, which is a, a big <laughs> overarching umbrella. And we'll have to see what that means because it's very easy to, to put uh, words out there, but it, it's it's a little bit more complicated to, to back them up. So some of the questions that I came up with because of my training and the way I, I, I think is, well, what do, actually, what do these sensors actually measure? How are these signals related to public health? One of the big questions is, isn't there too much information at some point? Are we just drowning in information and, and, and starving for, for knowledge? So what kind of sensors are we, are we talking about and what kind of problems are we looking at? From a statistical perspective, it's, it's pretty clear what it is. It's you have three time series, the three axes. You have a set of labels. And what you want to do, predict a set of labels when you don't know what happened. So what, what we did, we said one thing that you could do is to take this time series and break it down into small little chunks. So what happened if you look at this? very much looks like this. So our brain is looking for patterns. So what we are doing, we're essentially looking for something that characterizes a movement. In this case, the fact that this black line goes up and down again, this green one goes up and then. So this is what our brain does automatically. So we can do the same thing with a computer. We can cut it into small little pieces and then just match them to the other places. So that is a movelet. So you, you can cut the time series, you match it, and you find uh, what the person was doing. From the BLSA study, 147 subjects between 60 and 67 years of age, and 68 to 74, and just did the medians and the, the quantiles. And uh, I'm not sure how well you see, but essentially uh, the younger group has a higher median consistently across the range. And what you can do, you can do simple things like doing a t-test at every time, at every hour during the day, to see whether the older uh, uh, individuals have less activity than the younger individuals. If you have the data, which is for subject I at visit at, at day J at time T, you may be interested whether the effect is time dependent. In other ways, in other words, if a, when a person is older, is the activity just going down everywhere? or is the activity going differentially down across the day? Um, and the same thing for BMI. And these are some of the results. So these are from a paper by, by Jeff Goldsmith and, and Vadim Zipunikov. So this is the effect of increasing in age. So this is the mean activity counts. So as you go from uh, yellow, orange to, to blue, the, pers the, the group is aging. So what you see is that there is a, a, a dramatic reduction in activity from an average age of 50 uh, uh, to an average age, age of, of 80. So there, there is essentially from 50 to 80, the activity intensity uh, is halved. Um, also, you see a very interesting thing that we, we, we published actually with, with Jennifer, um, with Jennifer Schrack, which is that the effect is much more pronounced in, in the mid to late afternoon uh, than in, in mid morning. Interestingly, BMI has, has a, 
a, a different effect. So this is BMI 20 to BMI 35. Uh, you see that um, about 2.5 increase in BMI kind of is comparable to about five years of age, at least for this type of data. And uh, interestingly, there is more effect in the morning. So in the, in the paper with Jennifer uh, Schrack, we, we found that there is uh, an average loss of between 1.3 and 1.7% of activity per year on average. The most severe losses are in the mid to late afternoon. Probably the, the last message, uh, do not trust your calorie count. On the x-axis, you have the heart rate of the person, and on the y-axis, you have um, the energy expenditure, okay? So I don't, show you, I don't show you all the data, but I show you the data for one subject. Here it is. This is the data. The person is at uh, 65 bits per minute here. The person is at 100 bits per minute. Uh, 110. So this is a person who is on a on a treadmill doing all sorts of other exercises. And what you would get on a typical calorie counter, you would get the black line, which is which is the line fit to a particular population. However, the red line is probably much more representative of the relationship between heart rate and energy expenditure for for the subject. So what happens, you get half a calorie off every minute for that subject. And we were super okay with that until we multiply that by 1440, which is the number of minutes in a day. And then when we realize that in, uh, you can be off by 500 calories in 43% of the population and by 750 cal calories in 23% of the in our population doing the best cali population calibration possible. My conclusions is that uh, are that physical activity is very important for public health, um, and we we should we should measure it better and understand it better and, and make it part of, of, of what we do uh, more often. And there are a lot of very very excited young investigators in, in the school who really want to to do better and, and to measure things better. And uh, I thank all of them and, and thank you for for your attention.